lot of us walk around with a lot of um, barriers to expressing ourselves, to showing ourselves, to exhibiting any sort of vulnerability, uh, sharing our creativity. Well, you never talk, and that's why we're that's why we have this trouble. I don't talk. I touch. People walk around and they hide all the best parts of themselves. It takes a little bit of bravery and boldness to open your mouth and share what you're thinking, um, but a lot of times it can be quite remarkable. But first of all, it's good to have a definition of what improvisational theater is. Um, it's simply working without a script. I think that what improv does in terms of trust for people is that it puts them in a situation where they have to do something and they find that they can actually do it, that their biggest barrier is not that they're not able, but that they're doing things like, you know, generally censoring themselves. I just Facebook friended you. Well, that's great. I don't think the arresting officer is going to be so happy about that, though. Will you accept my friend offer? <laughs> I can get computer access. I probably will. The programs that I do are, um, they're experiential in that I have people participate in an activity, an exercise, a game perhaps, and then they discuss what they observed in others, what they experienced, the thoughts they had, the feelings they had maybe, and then we discuss the application to, you know, real life. The uh, exercises, you know, Usually they're a little bit challenging, and usually uh, they, they might even have a little element of scariness to them. You don't have anything but yourself or your partner or partners. That's your resource. Just because it's scary doesn't mean it's dangerous. And I think that's another important lesson that improv teaches, that there's a difference between danger and fear. And a lot of times the fear keeps us from doing things that aren't dangerous at all. Sometimes, uh, you know, someone will be asked to do something somewhat silly. And they're not used to doing silly things around other people, or maybe they're not used to doing silly things at all. But it doesn't hurt you, and it can really help to loosen you up and make you more human. And they feel like other people are looking at them and judging them. But of course, other people aren't looking or judging at all. It's not all about you, you know. No, I'm not stepping into the lobby because I'm not um, In improv, making an offer is uh, simply giving your partner or partner something to respond to. In, in the course of responding to me, then you're making an offer through your response, so I can respond to that. And, and allows us to build something organically um, and spontaneously. The application of that in real life is, it gets people to stop being so controlling. Um, it gets groups to realize their potential. One of the things that I established early on in the program, whatever the program may be, is that this is not dangerous. You know, this is a safe environment. Um, we're going to be nice to each other. I'm not going to put anybody on the spot and make them just respond to whatever the situation is. Or maybe you're in a group. Respond as a group to whatever's going on. You know, it's just not that scary. And I think once people understand it's not that scary, and it's certainly not dangerous, most of us have really, really small comfort zones. Maybe because we've all gone through junior high school, you know. Um, and, you know, we've experienced that acute self-consciousness. But that doesn't really serve us that well. But the only way to broaden your comfort zone, by the way, is to get out of your comfort zone. You seem like a Led Zeppelin kind of guy. Yeah. I mean... I don't like Led Zeppelin. I don't like Robert Plant's voice. Yes. Oh my god, this concert's so good. Which way the floor?
One of the most important things about improv is that it can help you get into the moment. But the result of imp improvising depends on the process from moment to moment to moment. The more you focus on the result, the less you're going to get there. Uh, an example is a lot of people do improv because they want to make people laugh. You know, they want to be funny. But the more people focus on being funny, the less funny they are. Um, another thing to work on is, uh, is adaptation um, with individuals and with groups. You know, a lot of times we think, oh, my plan didn't go the way I wanted to. It's a failure. Well, it's not a failure at all. It's just that you have to get outside of the mindset that it's a failure just because you didn't want, it didn't go the way you wanted it to go. Um, most of us forget the idea of play. You know, a lot of times I'll start a program with a, with a game. Not a competition, but a game. And everybody's thinking, you know, how do I win? You know, how do I make somebody else lose? The groups learn to communicate better. If they learn how to create and work better together, well, obviously it's going to be a happier and more productive group. But a lot of my communication work is focused on uh, physicality. What are you doing with your body? What are you doing with your face? What are you doing with your voice? All the things that actors use. Most of us think of communication as just the words we're saying, when in fact, it's so much more than that. Well, the, the experience is inherently a team-building experience because it's a shared experience and people will have uh, vulnerability and when people are sharing an experience where they're vulnerable, they connect. They see each other's human sides. Um, because I guess it's an adventure. And it's a silly adventure perhaps at times, but it's an adventure just the same.